Hi folks, this is a short video about how to use interactive tools with groups. So we're going to be focusing specifically on how to use blogs, journals or wikis with smaller groups of students within your module. Um, if you want to have module-wide activities, that's covered in other videos. And uh, if you would like to use discussion boards, that's also covered in videos that look at that in more detail because it's a little bit more complicated. So, unlike setting up a module-wide interactive tool activity, with anything group-related, you always want to go to the users and groups, groups area, because you need to set up your groups initially and part of the setup of the groups also sets up the tools you want to use. So, what we're going to do in this case is we're going to have multiple groups and we're going to set them up as manual enrol. So I have another video about discussion boards that goes through how to set up self-enrol groups if you would like students to sign up to the groups themselves. But in this case, we know which groups we want to add the students to. It's already pre-assigned. Um, so we're going to use the manual enrol option and we're using the group set option. So a group set is a group of groups essentially. So it allows you to manage the top level permissions for multiple groups in one place, as opposed to having to go into each group individually, which can be very time consuming. So um, this should save you some time, hopefully. So group set, manual enroll is the option we're clicking. And then we need to give our group set a name. So essentially we are going to call these collaboration groups and these are going to be in use across the period of our module, or the duration of our module. And then this is where we need to explain how the groups will be used and what the expectations are for each tool. So, you know, expectations, how many posts, length of posts, which tools, um, and you also want to do things like include where students can find help, including uh, help material links, so there's lots of links to um, that you can include to the Blackboard help materials which are really good for students related to these specific tools. So we're going to keep this bit a bit brief because we might want to add more of this detail into the tools themselves so it's contextually relevant. So I'm just going to copy this information into a quick notepad here um, so that I've got it handy for later. Right. So now I want the group to be visible to students and I'm going to go through how you can add blogs, journals and wikis. So we're just going to leave these three options ticked in the list. So this each group is going to have access to blogs, journals and wikis. Um, I'm going to make all of these assessed activities just so you can see the more complex option um, because if you do no marking then it's a much shorter video but it's good to know how the options differ. Uh, the other option I almost always leave on for groups is email because email is really helpful for you to be able to email the groups and also for the students to be able to communicate um, with their own group as well. So we're going to make these out of 40 because it's an undergraduate module and we want it to be pass fail and we are going to uh, ask them for two blog entries, two journal entries, um, and we're going to ask them for uh, two page saves in the wiki. Okay, so that's how we've got it set up there. And if we keep going down, I do tend to allow personalization of the group so that the students can sort of change the visual look of the group. They can change the color scheme. And then I'm going to set up my number of groups. So I'm going to say that there are uh, three groups in this case. And you can choose to click on this uh, create smart view for each group in the set. A smart view is essentially a filter of the grade center. Uh, so that can be very helpful when you're marking the groups. Um, I will 
turn that on this time and I will show you how to sh change the name of the Smart View so that it matches the groups um, in the Grade Centre. So if we click on Submit, that has now created our collaboration groups and then we've got Group 1, Group 2, Group 3, but that might not be the right kind of name for your group. Um, depends how you're doing it. So we could say, okay, actually these collaboration groups are based around seminars or they're based on a specific topic or something like that. So I'm just going to say seminar A, seminar B and seminar C just for the sake of this demo. Now, if you want um, to add instructors and students at this point, you definitely can. Um, and that's quite a good idea. Um, if you are um, adding staff facilitators to groups, for example, you can click on add users and you can show all users regardless of role, which you have to do if you want to add an instructor to a group. I should add that instructors can see any group that they want to via the users and groups, groups area of the module, but this is if you want the students to see that that staff person is a member of the group as a facilitator. So if I hit go, um, then you will see that now instructors have shown in the list. So I'm the facilitator for seminar group A, so I'm going to hit submit. Okay, great. And uh, as you saw there, we could also add students. So if I go back into add users, I can say these two students are in my seminar group, which is fantastic. Um, you can see as well here, if this was a case of just kind of randomly assigning people to groups, you can randomize enrollments. But uh, as I said, that's not the scenario in this example. So I'm going to populate the other groups later on because I actually need to check some things before I add people to those groups. So I'll show you how you can get back to this enrollment page in a moment, just in case you're kind of adding people incrementally. So if I hit submit, that has now created the seminar groups. So to edit the settings or the membership for all of the groups at the same time, what you need to do is go up to the group sets area. And this is from users and groups groups, just so you know where we are. And you need to click on the arrow and click on um, edit group set membership to change the members. So that's where we added members. And if you need to change the settings of all the groups, then you do that in edit group set properties. So you can see all of the options that we edited before are available here. Okay. Excellent. Now, because the three activities are summative activities, another piece of setup that we need to do is go to the Grade Center and hide the columns for those activities. So I'm going to the full grade center and you'll see that now all of the, the collaboration groups have columns for each tool. So you can see there'll be three columns for each collaboration group. Um, and you can see that it retains that original collaboration group one label, unfortunately, which is a bit annoying, but you know, there's not, not a whole lot you could do. You could always change it to seminar group um, as your overall name for the group set. Um, it was just an example, but one thing you might want to do is because we're marking it out of 40 because it's pass fail. Um, first things first, we want to hide the columns. So we go to the little arrow there, hide from students. And then we go to edit column information. And you could choose to use the undergraduate pass fail display there. So you can see that if the student, if this test student was there, in fact, I'll just add a little mark here. So if I type in 40, you can see that shows as a pass. Whereas if I click in zero, that shows as a fail. So that was what we want to do because these are pass fail activities in the scenario. Um, the other thing I mentioned before was that we've added smart views for these groups. So if you wanted to edit the smart views so that they were more helpful, if we go into smart views, you'll see that it's created collaboration group smart views. So we would go in and edit the smart view. And you'll see here that it's the smart view for seminar A. So we could just say, relabel it as seminar A, add it to our favorites so it shows up as a helpful link and hit submit. 
So you can see that now I can filter the grade center by seminar A and just see the two students who are in that group and see what they've been doing. So you can see that they are just in these three columns and when they have work completed in the blog. So if I hover over it, you can see at the top of the, I don't know if you can see that in the video, but sort of in the information bar that shows up here, you can see that's the blog, that's the journal, and that's the wiki. So you might choose to relabel these as you go along, um, but at least you always have a way to find out which column is for which activity. But that's just kind of the way it sets up the group tool, so you know how to clear it up a little bit. Um, and in terms of if you needed to access some more complicated settings for the individual activities you've set for the students, um, you can access those by going into the course tools area and selecting, say, blogs. So if I go into blogs, you'll see that the blogs we've set up for seminar A, B and C are here. So if I needed to change the settings for them, I can do that here. But bear in mind, you'd have to change the settings for each blog individually, which could be a bit cumbersome um, and you'd need to make sure they all matched. So I do tend to um, err on the side of caution with some of these um, specific settings in the course tools area. But having said that, in this scenario, we've got three different activities we're asking the students and the groups to do, and that would be highly unusual. You would generally just have like a group blog or a group journal or a group wiki. 